welcome back to YouTube. It's my channel of an everyday life of an ASB. My name is ASB Ansel and I'm all about creating mental health and wellness series versus sharing my life story and experiences along the way with all these mental illnesses like shared bit, depression, anxiety, OCD and the like. Even though just to be clear that obviously autism, like especially syndrome is not basically a mental illness. It's basically a neurological disorder that basically affects our wiring of the brain really similarly maybe with depression but in a different case of the wiring how it works and whatnot based on what I've shared with you or what Asperger's syndrome is all about basically and all for the good though and if you've follow, been following me from day one I welcome you all to the newbies basically as well as the old bees and hopefully all this has been an educational and motivational kind of you know set up for you guys to get up and go and maybe create an awareness and understanding on your health series or whatever it may be that you want to address to you all as well as maybe sharing these around to family and friends and all further ado though I humbly apologize I got the actual um, numbering system wrong from the last part I was sharing about the misconceptions of social anxiety basically it's supposed to be part four episode two basically which I humbly apologize that my mistake basically you know and humbly I apologize in advance and also just to give you a heads up as a disclaimer I'm no medical professional I'm just normal everyday girl just trying to share my life stories and experiences based on my training as well of my life experiences you know of in the past of what I've been going through with the training and also just experiences of dealing with different people in my walks of life who I've been with just to give you a clearer understanding of it all, it's basically for signs and symptoms versus just, you know, knowing what to do when you need it, so to speak. And when all we're going to do though, guys, basically, you know, this one, if you see it, you know, of these clinical signs, symptoms, be it whatever it may be, like, say, you know, of the ones that I'm sharing with you all of all of these mental illnesses or mental disorders you know seek professional help for yourself or for your loved one or even just as I said just approach them with care and actually show them that there is help out there and you know be more patient and empathetic and like to them all regardless of what it may be so no further ado guys basically this is part five which is the social anxiety disorder, disorder treatments tips and advice self-help tips and advice along the way for you all so let's begin basically social anxiety sufferers have made like for this one social anxiety disorder treatment number one challenging the negative thoughts as we know with many people that suffer from social anxiety and other form of mental illnesses will have negative thoughts and beliefs to themselves that may contribute to the anxiety if you have social anxiety disorder or social phobia as I mentioned before you may find yourself thinking some of the thoughts similarly to what I'm going to address as examples number one I know I'll end up looking like a fool number two people may think I'll oh, I'm stupid basically number three is my voice will start shaking I'll humiliate myself and number four I won't have anything to say I'll seem boring to them and I might bore them to death right and tip for that is Challenge these negative thoughts in a real effective way to reduce the symptoms of social anxiety disorder or any other form of mental illness that causes you to, you know, have these negative thoughts. The first step to this is identify the automatic negative thought pattern that is underlining your fear of certain situations, for example, for this social anxiety series. For ex an example for this to maybe illustrate to you all to get a better understanding it, if you're worried about an upcoming work presentation that you have to do at work to your business colleagues the underlying negative thought might be I'm going to blow it everyone will think I'm completely incompetent in doing this okay and the next step down for that is to analyze and challenge these negative thoughts it helps to ask yourself questions about these negative thoughts you know do I know for sure that I'm going to blow the presentation or another question you can think of even if I'm nervous will, person, will people will necessarily think that I am incompetent. Through this logical evaluation of your negative thoughts, however, you can gradually replace them with the more realistic and positive ways of looking at social situations that triggers your anxiety in the first place. It can be incredibly scary to think about how, you, how and why you're feeling this way in the first place and why you're th thinking this as well, the way you do about these everyday social situations you may come to face in your everyday life, be it for a classic example, as I said before, basically you're doing a presentation to your work colleagues. Okay, the unhelpful thinking styles involved in social phobia in particular, ask yourself if you're engaging in this, any of the following unhelpful thinking styles, is mind reading, basically, 
assuming you know what other people are thinking and that they see you in the same negative way that you see yourself number two is fortune telling predicting the future usually while well, assuming this will happen you just know that things will go horribly so you're already anxious to believe in a situation has a rhythm of that particular you know social anxiety disorder case of the classic one i've just illustrated to you all about the work places number three catastrophizing which is blowing things out of proportion for example, if people notice that you're nervous, it will be awful, terrible, or disastrous to you, you know, in your way. And number four, personalizing, assuming that people are focusing on you on an, in a negative way, or that's what's going on with other people that has to do with you. The, the answer to this, if you're thinking, how can I stop this from happening for everyone looking at me, is in order to reduce your self focus back again, pay attention to what is happening around you and as well as the environment. That you're in rather than monitoring yourself or focusing on your symptoms of anxiety and your body things here that you can include are as follows number one look at your surroundings as i said as well as the people that you're socializing with number two really listen to what is being said not to your own negative thoughts number three don't take all the responsibility for keeping conversations going however silence is okay now and again other people will contribute in the end however Self-help number two for the social anxiety disorder treatment, learn to control your breathing. As we know, many changes are happening in the environment and inside our bodies, you know, that's happening while we're becoming anxious. One of the first changes is to begin to breathe, is that you will begin to breathe quickly and heavily, hyperventilating to the point where either that or you may be doing the opposite effect, the rapid shallow breath, which is obviously hyperventilating and it will throw you off balance from the oxygen and carbon dioxide that's important in our body leading to more physical symptoms of anxiety such as dizziness, feeling of suffocation, increased heart rate and muscle tension. Learning to slow your breathing down can help you bring your physical symptoms of anxiety back under control. Practice the following breathing exercise will help you to stay calm when you're the center of attention. A breathing exercise to help you calm in social situations is, as I've shared with you many times before, of that breathing technique that might help to you all, basically. So if you haven't followed me on that, it's basically maybe under AS, dealing with public places, tips and advice there, basically, you know, and also just how, how I go about my breathing techniques. It may work for me and it may not work for you but I did give some other alternative you know breathing techniques that could be of use to you as well as other form of you know techniques in that video as well even though I may have missed out a few bits that may be of beneficial to you so um another way about basically you know for anxiety relief there are some other form of relaxation techniques available be it your meditation ones maybe by just regular practice of these relaxation techniques of the meditation, yoga, progressive muscle relaxation will eventually over time help you to get over the physical symptoms of anxiety. Tip number self help tip number three of the social anxiety treatment is one of the most helpful things for you to overcome anxiety or social anxiety disorder, shall we say, is to face the social situations you fear rather than to avoid them easy said than done i know baby steps is the key here anxiety avoidance keeps social anxiety disorder going obviously it is okay to have feelings that cause you anxiety but if these feelings are bottled up and not addressed it will be increasingly difficult to move past them learning to tolerate and address these feelings will help you to feel better avoidance leads to more problems as i want to address here <coughs> While avoiding nerve-wracking situations, for example, maybe speaking in public is the key one, as I've addressed to you before, when you're speaking in public in a way of, you know, you've got a speech coming up for the sake of your, you know, conference or meeting that you're attending it to with your work colleagues, basically. Um, you've got to remember, though, an avoidance, so of these nerve-wracking situations of that classical example of address to you you may feel better in the short term but it will prevent you from being more comfortable in social situations and learning how to cope with this in the long term 
is more important. In fact, the more you avoid a festive situation, the more frightening it might become for you. Avoidance may also prevent you from doing things you'd like to do but or reaching your certain goals. For example, again, a fear of speaking up may prevent you from shaking ideas at work, standing out in the classroom, or making new friends in the first place. So the best step here for you guys is challenging social anxiety one step at a time. Know what tr is triggering it off in the first place. It may be seem impossible for most of us to face the or overcome this kind of scenario. You can do it by, like I said, baby steps at a time. The key is to start with the situation that you can handle and then gradually work onto the ones, you know, are more challenging for you of these upcoming situations or whatever it may be. Building your self-confidence and self-esteem is also important as well as, you know, learning how to cope with everything around you as you move up the anxiety ladder, obviously. As I said before, sometimes we need to get uncomfortable to the comfortable or getting comfortable to the uncomfortable. Vice versa, you know, as I've shared before. Another classic example here I wanted to share with you all in tip number three while you're facing your fears is basically, if so, for example, if you're socializing with strangers that you don't even know, that makes you anxious, you might start by accompanying an outgoing friend to a party. You know, one-on-one -on -one interaction, maybe try it as one-on-one. -on -one. Or another one is basically just, as I said before, like earlier in the piece, like looking at the mirror, pretending that mirror is another person and, you know, practice doing small talk if they be. Once you're comfortable with that step, you might try and introduce yourself to you, you meet new people and so on. Working your way up, up on that social phobia, anxiety ladder, how you can do this is basically for your tips here is don't try to face your bigger fear or of it right away though remember small tips it's never a good idea to move too fast or take on too much or force things that you feel you want it to happen straight away some things as we know will take time eventually this will actually backfire in the long run and it will reinflect or reinforce your anxiety number two be patient overcoming social anxiety takes time and practice it's gradual step by step progress number three use the skills you've learned to stay calm as again as i said you know, self-meditation versus, you know, challenging these negative thoughts and assumptions about yourself. No, tip number four for your self-help is social anxiety treatment, building better relationships with others. You know, actively seeking out and joining out, you know, supportive social environments, be it, you know, being with people around you, whoever it may be, basically, you know, is another effective way of tackling your social anxiety or overcoming it. The following suggestions are good ways to start interacting with others in positive ways. Number one, take social skills class or an assertive training class. These classes are often, you know, offered at a local adult education center or community colleges, maybe. Number two, volunteer. Do something you really enjoy, you know, such as walking dogs in a shelter, you know, or stuffing your wallets for a campaign. Anything that will give you an activity to focus on while you're also engaging with a small number of like-minded people around you. Number three, work on your communication skills. We know sometimes when we have that tendency of, you know, social anxiety versus all these other, you know, anxiety disorders in the first place, basically. Um, this will depend on the one thing of our relationships with others. It depends on the clear, emotionally intelligent communication that we bring out to others. If you can find that you have trouble connecting to others, learn the basic skills of emotional intelligence can help. Step number five, last but not least, or shall we say tip number five with the self-help is change your lifestyle. You know, obviously while life changes alone aren't effective enough to overcome social phobia or other mental health illnesses, you know, they can support your overall treatment progress and obviously it will actually help you in the long run in the way of recovery. The following lifestyle tips will help you reduce your overall anxiety levels as well as, you know, other, you know, mental illnesses and set the stage for the successful treatments in the long run. Number one is avoid caffeine or limit the caffeine that you take. You know, many, many food items versus your drink items such as coffee, tea, caffeinated soda, energy drinks and chocolate may act as stimulants to increase your anxiety symptoms. So, again, avoid or limit them. It's okay for a point that you can take them in small doses, but not quite a fair amount. It's all about, you know, quality, quantity versus quality. 
Number two, drink only in moderation. That goes in tone to what I just said. You may be tempted to drink some of these caffeinated drinks that you used to drink for, you know, a party maybe, also like your know, alcohol and the like, or other social situation in order to calm your nerves. But our alcohol will increase the risk of having an anxiety attack, however. Number three, quick smoking. We know nicotine is a powerful stimulant also. On the contrary to popular belief, smoking leads to higher, not lower, levels of anxiety. Last but not least, four, get adequate sleep. Sleep is also important. When we're sleep deprived, we're more vulnerable to anxiety. Being well rested will help us stay calm in social situations. And last but not least, if you need to, you know, certain medications that could help you in the long run, you know, be it sleep and anxiety you know, sleeping pills versus your know, anxiety pills and all that. But, you know, it's the choice of yours if you really want to actually go about taking these meds. You know, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's all about making the right lifestyle changes as addressed just right now about changing that lifestyle where you're at, maybe with what you've been doing. So basically, it just ends part five of the self-help tips and advice of your treatment. Give me a like for thumbs up for support, basically. Get... Give me comments below of maybe some of the tips that you feel might be of importance to others so that we can support others. Basically, also feel free to follow me on Twitter and Facebook, ask me answers all. You know, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so for daily weekly vlogs. I'm hoping to do so. So whatever I'm missing right now in some parts, maybe in the series of whatever I'm trying to address, so I'll just see how I go with these ones versus all these other everyday things I want to address to you all before time runs out. So in all the further ado, love it. Love what you do, do what you love, love one another, love yourself, forgive yourself, forgive others, be kind to yourself and others. Till next time, thanks for the support, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon.